going on YouTube? Jelani from JelaniTheMarketer.com back again with another video and I got a special guest with me today. Goes by the name of Greg Jeffries and this guy is amazing superstar affiliate and I'm so happy to have him on the channel. Um, what's up? What's going on Greg? How's it going Jelani? I am doing well man. It's pretty warm where I am. How about you? Uh, it's actually chilly today in Austin, Texas but uh, tomorrow who knows it may be uh, 80 degrees. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so if you don't know who Greg Jeffries is, he's one of the, um, dream car winners for the ClickFunnels affiliate program. And I asked him to come on this channel today so we can talk about how he got there, the strategies that he uses to, you know, promote, um, affiliate offers and just how he runs his business. So Greg, can you just give a little introduction to my channel, who you are and, um, how you actually got started with all this? Yeah, so I primarily focus on um, driving traffic through SEO, which means just ranking content, uh, or yeah, ranking content in the search engines, um, whether it be YouTube videos or websites. So that's how I drive the traffic to the offers that I promote. So um, yeah, just kind of how I got started, I guess, is just um, just a lot, of, a lot of trial and error, a lot of failure, and sort of gravitated towards the world of SEO because when I got started, I didn't have a lot of money. And although SEO may be a little bit slower than paid traffic, it's a lot cheaper. Uh, you know, there's a very low barrier to entry um, if you just um, if you just kind of have a direction or know sort of what to do. Which it's that's the tricky part because there's so much misinformation out there. So it took me a couple of years to kind of sift through all the you know myths and BS information out there to find the stuff that or, or to find a little proprietary little formula that works for me. So basically, I just uh, we can get into more of what I do uh, later, but basically just, yeah, create content uh, targeted towards uh, certain keywords and then, yeah, uh, because they're, the content is so targeted, that's basically why it ranks, but, um, you know, there you can also send backlinks to those pieces of content if you want to boost a little further, but... So, you're getting ahead of yourself. What's a backlink? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um... So basically, SEO, it, you know, there's all these, you know, do's and don'ts out there with SEO, but it's really simple. Uh, you know, it's very logical. You know, obviously, it had to be designed. There's some structure to it. So it pretty much just comes down to content and backlinks. So those are the two elements. So the first element is content, you know, having relevant content. Um, that's how Google and some of these other search engines find your, your content in order to rank it and organize it kind of make sense of all that data yeah and the other element of SEO is backlinks which just means links from other sites or web properties to your piece of content um, and the higher the authority of that backlink then the or and, and the more of those links that you have basically the higher over time the higher that piece of content will rise in the search engines whether it be YouTube search engine or Google or being uh, based on that particular keyword, and there's you know several different ways you can go about um, you know improving that rank. But I I you know backlinks is really something that I don't focus heavily on. That's I, I know how to use them and stuff, but I mainly cre uh, focus on creating a high quality piece of content first because if you start with that. Um, then you're going to it's just going to be better in the long run period um, rather than trying to start and, and like spend all this time and money and effort trying to rank this crappy piece of content you right. know if you start with a good piece of content that's going to help you um, in, you know in the long term because SEO is kind of a long game anyway so you just like this video this interview we're doing like it's going to be a good piece of content you know you want to have just quality content that's you know engaging and giving value right it's actually going to help people right because it's kind of compounding over time it just kind of keeps going and increasing pretty much in value um so what made you want to do seo rather than paid because i know a lot of people be like oh paid is the way to go like you know it's quick it's easy whereas seo is like kind of a realm that a lot of people don't want to kind of go into because some may say that it's i don't know takes too long to get results what do you think mm -hmm. about that 
you got to have money. It's got to come from somewhere. Yeah. So at the time, I didn't have much money. I was um, none of my jobs that I've ever worked paid me enough to have even anything left over. So you got to have a budget from somewhere. Where where are you going to get the money to run paid traffic? You know, uh, sure you can have credit cards, but um, I was basically using um, I, so. Even though I had um, didn't have that much money, I had credit cards because I had good credit. Um, so I, I was using that money to invest in courses to like learn this stuff. Okay. Um, and then I implemented what I learned, which was like mostly SEO stuff. So, you know, you could start with paid traffic, but I mean, there's two ways to go about it, or or, or three, I guess, or whatever. So you either like try to try it on your own and like hopefully you'll it'll work out i know that's worked for some people but that's like the rare rare story yeah of like the first campaign they hit a home run like that's very very rare it does happen but it's probably not yeah. um the other way is to find a, a good course or a mentor but again you gotta have money um it's got to come from somewhere and just pay them for the answers of what's working for them copy their results and then scale up but um but so you're going to have to have the money for the course and or the mentor and the budget for the paid traffic. So the money's got to come from somewhere. So like the ideal situation would be, you know, if you're trying to get away from like the nine to five, would be get a, um, you know, try to lower your living expenses and try to find a job that's or jobs that's going to at least cover your expenses. Plus give you, you know, a couple hundred dollars, probably like 300 plus a month at least uh, as a budget that you can use towards paid traffic and, if you have that sort of scenario, then sure, you use it for that, and that will hopefully get you um, results quicker. And, and then, as you start to get results, then the money isn't a problem. You can go, you know, you get a loan or whatever. If you find have a campaign that's working, it's just uh, you just pour money on it, and it's, it's going to compound pretty quickly. But right. the money's got to come from somewhere. So the cool thing about SEO is that you don't have to have a, a ton of money uh, to, to actually get started. Um, Sweet. So before we talk about the strategies that you use, what did you want to do before SEO? Like, did you ever see yourself being like an internet marketer or something like that? That's a, a good question. So I've always been entrepreneurial, but see, I didn't have a lot of entrepreneurial influences. Okay. So I didn't know what that meant or how to go about that path. So I have a design background and went to a really expensive art school for graphic design. Uh, great, but, um, and you know, I'm talented. But I never really, you know, there's always that, that myth of like the starting starving artist. I don't really buy into that because there's a lot of very successful artists right. out there. But um, I just didn't, um, af like as I was going through college and afterwards, I was like, man, I really don't want to, um, I love being creative, but I didn't want to do it as a job because it kind of takes the fun out of it right. for me. Like um, having to be, be creative on command, like under deadlines. Like I, I work better when I am not under the pressure to be creative. So right. I, um, yeah, I, I didn't really ever see myself becoming an entrepreneur because I didn't, I didn't know that was a possibility. I, I, I was always taught, you know, high school, college, and then go get a job. And I didn't, I didn't know what that job was going to be. Right. I just knew that that was the path I was supposedly supposed to take. And I gravitated towards um, internet marketing specifically because um, I, I sucked at a job. You know? <laughs> I'm a hard worker, but I just never, yeah. it never translated into enough money. So, like, I've never made more than, um, I've never even made like $30,000 before taxes. It was like low 20s. Um, thousands at a job and so um, I know I was more talented than that so like I'm making far more than that for myself now but I just I, I don't know I couldn't crack the code of like climbing the corporate ladder I, I, I don't yeah, know yeah no I, 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 I totally I, know what you mean I suck at resumes uh, which that's your foot in the door so if you can't even get the um, interview like if I can get the interview I'll get hired but you know I, you know, I guess that comes down to like copywriting and selling it yourself and stuff so um, I've had all these credentials, but um, for whatever reason, just couldn't find, foot, put, get my foot in the door. And then once I was um, at the job, I, uh, you know, I, I, I think everybody does this to some extent. Like you, you learn your your job, and then once you learn it, you figure out the laziest way that you can do it. Absolutely. And so, like, what takes you eight hours in the beginning because you're learning it, um, eventually. It, 
whittled down my job tasks into like I can probably I'm, I'm stretching out an eight hour day, but it only it only takes me like an hour and a half to two hours to do the actual work at my job, right. which eventually gets to the point where it's so mind numbing. You just want I I just had to leave. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Um, I'm the same way. I'm the same exact way. And I think like a lot of entrepreneurs kind of share that where they can't be tied down and they kind of just want to live their life in a creative sense the way they want to. Um, and once you start putting those time constraints and all that extra stuff, it kind of gets really, really daunting. Um, so I, I absolutely know what you mean. Um, so when you figured out like, okay, this is kind of working for me. Like, how did you figure out the strategy um, to scale something or to even actually let's make this simple when you're starting out a new affiliate offer what do you do to take it to the next level so for click funnels for example how did you a find click funnels and then how did you figure out like okay I could promote this and then implement the strategy that you created to scale it to the point where you have yeah so it's a little less um like scientific or whatever I need to probably kind of optimize this process but when I first started promoting ClickFunnels, like I've been promoting it from the beginning, like it's been around for like three years or something. Yeah, so three years. I, I was waiting. I saw it launching, and then it launched. And like you never know, um, you never know if it was going to evolve into what it is now. Um, you know, there's so many different products and services and product launches out there and softwares. You never know what's going to like stick around and what's going to be like gone next year. Right. Um. So I, it looked cool, and so I put some videos up. I initially started with videos um, because I wasn't that, um, I I knew a lot about uh, websites. I just, um, I I don't know, I just started with videos at the time. I had websites, but I I was promoting it primarily with videos. Um, And I noticed after a couple of months, like this is just, it's very simple, very logical, but like this, it took me a long time to kind of pay attention basically because I was just like going all over the place like promoting every all these different offers and then um, I the, the biggest and this is a tip that everybody should be doing but it took me way too long to start doing this but start tracking your income yeah. <laughs> start tracking your, your money because like a lot of times you you uh, that, that'll give you some insights into like what's working so that's how I discovered uh, that ClickFunnels was worth uh, focusing more attention on because probably like a Several months into it, um, or maybe even a year into it, I was like, wow, like, I guess just from these videos, like, I'm making a couple of hundred bucks. Like, it started out smaller, but then it got up to, like, 300 a month, right. and it was kind of, it was consistent, and I was like, man, I should probably, <laughs> like, you know, I was wondering while I was still broke, and I was like, oh, <laughs> I should probably focus a little more attention on promoting this, because it's working, and if I can make 300, like, um, before I ever read, you know, Grant Cardone's 10x, I was like, I wonder if I could like 10x this because, like, if I'm making 300 and that wasn't very hard, I didn't put much effort. Like, maybe by the time this time next year, I can like 10x it, and yeah. I did. Like, yeah. um, and all I did to do that was create a bunch more videos um, for long tail keywords, which all that is is longer search phrases related to that product or service. So right. um, the, the hurdle was trying to figure out what those long tail phrases were. Um, but there's tools out there, that, free tools that you can get those. So basically I just made a bunch of videos for you, uh, for ClickFunnels and I upload those to a channel and, uh, and just kind of sat back and over time it kind of compounded. So um, that's what I did. And I, I did the same thing um, with websites to scale up. So it took the same keywords and you create content around that. And now you've got two assets. You got a video channel and, and a website. And so, and to do, uh, so the overall strategy is basically comes down to like long tail keywords. So the advantage of long tail keywords is they're, they're easier to rank and they have very little competition because nobody like hardly anybody else, even though I've said this, um, on other webinar or uh, interviews and stuff um th- most people are they're not going to take any action period yeah and the people that do there uh there are like the other seos out there or other affiliate marketers even though they hear what i say I'm, they're um they're too like lazy or busy or whatever to actually do it um and so like um your competition is extremely small 
And so the first goal is to try to gather, to siphon that traffic in, you know, multiple mediums like uh, YouTube and, and uh, websites. Now, once you're on page one of YouTube or uh, uh, Google or Bing or whatever, then you kind of want to saturate and dominate all the positions. Right. So once you're ranked once, uh, you want to ideally saturate the whole page. Right. Uh, that way, no matter which video or link they click, they're all going to you. It doesn't matter. Um, and so how you do that is you just create multiple channels or multiple websites. You can even literally duplicate the site just to have another property because Google's not generally, in my experience, it's not going to rank this like multiple pages for the same um, website for that same term. So you have to have different properties. I see. So I just, yeah, just like, um, so to break it down, basically I kind of just test an offer. Um, like the click funnels was just one of the many offers I was promoting at the time. And then once I got some results, I'm like, cool. And I, you know, this is an evergreen, you know, long-term or uh, sustainable product. Right. Then I kind of, um, you know, do this shotgun slash rifle approach. I'm very focused on that. And then, um, just being disciplined and consistent creating, cause like at the time I still had a job. So I remember this one time where I created a big batch of click funnels videos. It was just for a month. I was like, you know, I'm going to, when I come home from work, I'm going to create like five videos a day for 30 days. So at the end of the time I had like 150 to 200 videos, which is a lot. Right. Um, but I broke it down in little bite sized pieces cause I only had a couple of hours at the end of every day. And, you know, if you had a, you know, I don't know if you're like moonlighting uh, on the side or whatever, but like if you have a full-time job or multiple jobs, when you come home, you're kind of tired. Right. You know, you have, so even though you might have several hours, you only have like a couple of solid hours of energy. Right. Um, so I knew that I just tried to work with what I had. And by the end of that time, uh, I had several hundred videos and that resulted and um, over time that kind of you know compounded my uh, commissions so uh, to, to scale this to multiple products and stuff you just you just do that same process for yes yeah. so back to when you made the videos did you find the keywords first like the long tail keywords first and then you're like okay I want to make a video on this long long tail keyword so like, Absolutely. okay yeah so I basically had the list and like every night I would pick five and then the next night I would pick five and just crank them out sick okay that, that seems like a really great strategy. Um, um, I was listening to your podcast on Funnel Hacker Radio, and one thing you mentioned was how you siphon traffic from, like, for example, lead pages. Can you explain, mm -hmm. like, what do you mean by that, and, like, how would you kind of take traffic that's from lead pages but then kind of put it into ClickFunnels or a different offer, whatever you're promoting, but how did you, you know, do that? Yeah, because, um, so... One, uh, you know, here's the thing with, with promoting click funnels. Like when it first came out, there aren't that many keywords to target because it's brand new. There's no search data right. there. So it actually benefited me for waiting several months to promote it because it got, it gave Google and so other search engines the oper you know, the, the time to gather that data. And I just come in, uh, push a button on one of these like free long tail generators. And now I've got a list of long tail keywords. And, uh, and, and uh, that I can start targeting. So the th like the low hanging fruit is the ClickFunnels keywords in this example. But once you target all those, where do you go from there? Right. You know, because once you're making money, I can guarantee you you're going to want to make more money. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so how do you scale? And so you got to kind of. Uh, put yourself in the shoes of other, these other companies and stuff. So, like, if you were ClickFunnels, what would you do? Yeah. Um, I would target all of my competitors because if you're a, a, a company like uh, ClickFunnels, I mean, the only people that have heard of ClickFunnels are people that um, are maybe kind of in an internet marketing space or, I don't know, they heard it from a friend. But if you're trying to promote ClickFunnels, um, you just got to piggyback off these other brands and products that are already out there, like Lead Pages. Lead Pages was around for several years before ClickFunnels. So, um, you know, you just, and so they've got lots of keywords to target. So I'm not, you know, hating on Lead Pages or some of their competitors, but you just want to capture some of that traffic that's already there 
and present this new offer to them. So that's that's how I scale. So I start with like ClickFunnels, the main product, or, and then I start to branch out to their direct competitors like Infusionsoft, um, membership site software, the uh, autoresponders, all the things that ClickFunnels does. That's how I'm getting these solutions. Right. And and we're starting with like the branded names like ConvertKit, Infusionsoft, Instapage. Uh, I mean, and I know those just from being in internet marketing for a long time so those come easy i know the landscape and then after and that's going to take you forever to <laughs> target right. unless you're doing like ppc or something which is fine you know a lot of these um products and services they don't allow you like click funnels i think it's cool with you bidding on their keywords but most of uh, these brands and uh, affiliate programs they don't like you bidding on their um their own keywords because yeah. they like to bid on those themselves right. so in this scenario uh you would bid on the lead pages terms because it's not against the ClickFunnels terms to bid on lead pages terms. Right. You know? Yeah. So you would. So again, that traffic's already there, and you would just redirect them there. And then the other layer is once you get done doing all that for all those other competitors, then you can branch into the more generic keywords that are like sales page builders, sales funnel tools, sales funnel software. Um, drag and drop, uh, you know, whatever landing page tool, squeeze page tool, uh, autoresponder, because that's well, a lot more generic than ClickFunnel. I mean, than uh, ConvertKit and Aweber and GetResponse and stuff. So then you get super generic. That's going to take you a long time. So this, this is a long, long term yeah. strategy. Yeah. But eventually, you're you're going to have so much traffic coming in. You know, and um, this is. Like if you focus on even like just this one product and doing that strategy I just mentioned, like you're gonna you're gonna eventually have so much money coming in as an affiliate and like your true competition of other affiliates that are actually gonna put in the effort to compete with you is ridiculously small because nobody has that much time. Yeah. Like, That's so true. So, so um, true. So if you can find a way to um, capture that traffic and scale up quick more quickly or maybe have a team or outsource some of this stuff um you can get that tr quicker but um the reality is just it's just going to take a while um so nobody most people don't like hard work so it's just uh yeah <laughs> it's just a matter of implementing this process and um trying to figure out how to do it as quickly as possible so the quicker that you can do it the the faster your results are going to be right so and you got to be consistent um, you said outsourcing, so I wanted to bring that up actually. So, when you made all those videos, did you outsource like the work for the blogging, or did you actually do the blogging yourself? Because I know you, if you have a lot of like 150 videos, that could take a while to make all those blog posts. Yeah, I I did. Uh, at first, it was just videos, and I yeah, I did it all myself. And I for a tool like ClickFunnels, I recommend doing it yourself. At least I do it because I'm the expert. Yeah. Like if it was a product that I didn't really wasn't an expert in or I didn't really care about so much, like a diet and weight loss product. Like yeah, I, I care about diet and weight loss, but like I'm not an expert in that niche. So um, I just want it to come. I just want to convey and for it to come across like in the in the videos and stuff that like I actually care and that I I know what I'm talking about because I think. Unless you're like an extreme newbie, and I think even beginners can pick up and recognize this, the difference between like somebody who does another shit from somebody that's like more experienced in like, um, you know, is giving actual value and doesn't necessarily, isn't like super needy and doesn't necessarily need that commission right. for, for in ClickFunnels. So I try to just give give value and stuff, and since I, I, I have a lot of experience to pull from, while I'm addressing like these certain long tail keywords um, in the videos, I can kind of connect that to some other related product or whatever, just to kind of add value that um, an outsourcer, even if they are, you know, proficient in internet marketing, might couldn't do. So right. I, I just want to, you know, these are long term assets. So I know it takes time, and you know, we've all unfortunately only got 24 hours in a day, so there's a limited amount you can do. And there's only one of me, so right, um, yeah. but that's yeah. I, I recommend that just because um, it's a, it's a, it's a long-term strategy, though. So yeah, um, that makes yeah. sense. I mean, you're not going to do 150 you know blog posts in a day, so yeah, take your time, be consistent. 
Um, so you got this figured out. You figured out the strategy. When was the point where you're like, okay, I can, you know, quit my job. I can actually do this full time. And like, how did that feel when you realized that? It, uh, well, the time I quit my job about a, a little over a year ago, and it was the second time I did that. So I had an experience. You know, the first time it didn't really go as planned. So the second time, uh, I was more serious. So the first time it was a, like a several, like 2012, I think, and um, it, it if everything would have gone to you know the way I had planned out it would have worked out but right. I didn't stick to my plan. Yeah, of um, course. So I my the the first time I quit my job was um in 2012 uh, and I just I didn't have enough you know I wasn't making enough money so I didn't have enough money so right. I got a big loan and the purpose of the loan was to cover my living expenses for a couple of months until I could build up or increase my passive income to at least make the payments on the loan so that by right. the time I ran out of money, I would still be okay. Right. And it would have worked, but I was an idiot and didn't <laughs> do what I to do. said I was going to do. Right. Um, which at the time, it was making courses on like Udemy and Skillshare and stuff. Because um, I was, I'll, I'll say this, so I, was, I had already gotten some traction. So I was like, oh, this is working. All I got to do is do more of it. Really easy. Would have I would have been, you know, free like five years ago if I would have stuck to that plan. <laughs> yeah. But I was an idiot, and I uh, blew it all on high ticket coaching, and um, those turned out to like suck and uh, just kind of be scams. Right. And so now I was out the money. So now I was in debt, and I didn't have money, and so I had to go get a job. So the second time I, I quit, I still didn't have enough to quit. I I had um. I didn't have enough passive income coming to cover all my expenses, but I was so miserable at my job, uh, um, and it didn't it didn't pay that much, um, so I had to make up that difference. But I I knew what I needed to do, and I um, and so I actually did it. Right. <laughs> and, yeah. and I I was pretty close to to covering all my expenses. Like I had some months where I could pretty much cover most of my expenses. The the big um, the big expense, though, was all this credit card debt that I'd racked up um, from purchasing all these products and services over the years. But like my my living expenses actually weren't that much. But yeah. um, but so that it worked out. The short story. So um, uh, so I like was it two thousand sixteen uh, in December. I and that was like I. I pushed it out. I stayed at that job longer than I needed to, really, because right. I was miserable. Like in the spring or the summer, but I was, even though it wasn't paying that much, I, it, I, I literally wasn't doing anything. <laughs> so I, I kept telling myself, I was like, man, like this is the easiest job. I, I literally wasn't doing anything. Yeah. I would come in and sit in my desk and like some days I would do stuff, but, uh, there were sometimes there would be entire weeks where I wouldn't do anything. And I was like, man, I don't think I'm never going to have a job where I literally don't do, do anything. <laughs> and so I just kind of, you know, stretched it out. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't have anybody to report to and nobody reported to me. So I was kind of like on a little island by myself. <laughs> and, um, again, it wasn't much money, but it, it eventually got to the point where it was so miserable. And since I was making such little money, I was like, you know what? Even though I'm not quite where I need to be. I know I'm smarter than this, right. and I'm losing money by just by sitting in this chair eight hours a day because I, even though I'm, I'm not super duper smart, like I could, I don't know, flip items on Craigslist for for more than I make in a right. day or something like that. So I was like, I'll find a way. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, so, absolutely. So I was making money as, a, a, you know. Making, had multiple streams as an affiliate then, but um, so I just scaled up what I was doing. In that case, I think it it, it was ClickFunnels and some other stuff, and so I just scaled them up. It worked, boom! In like a couple of months, I was making like finally making like five figures a month, and it worked out. Yeah. So um, that's amazing. That was a really long uh, story, but that's no. You know, I th that's I th happened. I think it's important to highlight that story because there's so many people out there who are probably in the same position and who want to get free, but you got to just kind of buckle down. I think that's what you did. You just said I had to do it. Yeah, and every, everybody
everybody's got a different situation. So to put it into context, like I'm single, I don't have a family, I don't have any kids. Right. Um, so I could afford to do that. But the again, going back, the ideal situation would be like, and especially if you have a, a family, is to um, you know be making enough at your job to at least um, at least cover your expenses and ideally have some money to uh, for a budget to pour into um, tools and resources. Because even if you're doing SEO, you're going to need domains and website which are extremely cheap but those are really all you need to get started or maybe a, a, a video recording tool a, a mic a laptop internet yeah. as basic expenses but and you know once your income out outweighs your um, expenses then then you can jump ship but I kind of jumped a little early because you know I, I was just it felt like the right time and luckily it worked out for me yeah. but um, it, again it also wasn't the first time. So if it was the first time, it, I here's the thing why I think it worked out better the second time. So the first time, the reason it didn't work out was obviously because I wasn't disciplined. I had never worked for myself. Um, you know, I had all these great ideas of like, um, you know, what, you know, I wish I had more time, you know, at my previous job. And then once you have it, yeah, if you're not used to it, you blow it. Right. And so I would get up at like 10 o'clock and like bum around on my computer and like play on Facebook and stupid stuff. And like yep. I basically wasn't doing what I needed to do. I wasn't working. And then I would just kind of like lounge all day in my PJs and stuff. And like, um, you know, by the end of the day, it's, you know, 10 o'clock and I haven't done anything. And right. I did that for, uh, weeks. And I was like, man, th this is precious time and I'm wasting it. And the second time around, I was a little more disciplined and had created uh, some structure for my day before I um, cut everything off of my job because I was like, man, this time I've got to make it work because yeah. it's uh, I I do not want to go back to a job. Yeah, like I, it's absolutely. I feel, and it, it's a uh, I've got a, a friend that I'm teaching all this stuff to now, and he's a childhood friend and. Um, it's taking some time to kind of reframe his mind because it's a different way of thinking, working for yourself from working for someone else. But I think, and, it, and it's tough in the beginning, I think, or at least for me it was. But I think once you once you get comfortable, once you're um, you know making enough to support yourself and you're you are free, it's very very hard to go back to the nine to five because. It's kind of like taking a wild animal and you're trying to put it in a cage now. It's yeah. like, but you've already seen the other side and you know there's something exactly. better out there and you've experienced it. Now you're you're back in a cubicle or something like it sucks. Yeah. So absolutely, that's amazing. That's an amazing story, uh, and I think it resonates with a lot of people, especially me. Um, so you quit your job. Now the next step is you have a hundred affiliates underneath you with ClickFunnels. What happened next? What is that process like? Like, tell the people, because I, I don't even know. Like, what happens when they're like, "All right, well, you have a hundred affiliates underneath you now. You get a car." Like, yeah, it's a lot of um, uh, leverage, yeah. basically, because you can, you, and that's one tip too. That, and and you don't have to, you know, win a car to um, to 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 leverage that or whatever. Like, leverage every one of your successes. So once you make a hundred dollars, um. Man, create a product or something. Let everybody know that you just made a hundred bucks, and like you can teach people how to get to that level. Once right. you get, to, and that'll probably get you to a thousand. Yeah. And then once you get to a thousand, repeat that same process, and that'll probably get you to ten thousand. And then just keep, you know, leveling up with that process because um, every obviously it starts with some effort yeah. and some hard work. Like you got to get those first results. You can't just like lie and BS. Uh, or you can, but I, I would. You know, <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> get real results because, like, um, whether, whether they're huge or, or small or whatever, um, because you got to remember, like, most people on the planet have never even made a dollar on the internet. So if you've made, you know, $100, you're doing way better than most people on the planet. Right. And they, you know, a certain demographic or a certain portion of people are going to look up to you and be like, oh man, can you just, like, how are you doing that? Can you teach me that? Um, and you can you can sell them a product or something. So like in the case of like winning a car, um, uh, the, being a dream car winner, th this is just further proof that your competition is ridiculously small. Like it blows my mind that there are more two comma club winners 
than dream car contest winners. How does that happen? Right. If you if you're a two climate club winner, sure you surely you've got money, and hopefully you're you're a good marketer. So shouldn't you also be a dream car winner? You know, so there, the, you know, a lot of people think of like since because I'm a dream car winner, and because there's whatever fifty other people that it's you know ClickFunnels affiliate program is saturated or whatever. I'm like, no, man. Like, yeah, absolutely there's not. Literally, I mean, there's people that. Um, yeah, I've gone through my training and have become a uh, uh, dream car winner. So, like, there, there's just – there's not that many people that <laughs> – <laughs> I mean, uh, of all the population of people on the planet, there's so many – there's so few people that even know what the heck ClickFunnels is. Right. Like, there's so much room for growth. Absolutely. And there's so many different angles to promote it. It's insane. So, like, you know, you've got business owners. You've got, you know, college students. You've got work-from-home moms. You've got uh, affiliate marketers. You've got people that are interested in e-com. Like, there's so many different angles of how you can use or and and promote um, ClickFunnels. So, and there's uh, it's just it's a very versatile product. To yeah, promote. yeah, I agree with you. Um, so you said you have a training. What is that training? It's called uh, SEO Affiliate Domination. So people can just check that out. But that's where I teach. Uh, my core process so of, of I teach how to rank like websites as well as um, YouTube videos in there but um, it's my long tail strategy and so how it's broken down is I, I teach them like the framework first and then I teach them some a variety of different scaling strategies um, so just various different ways to kind of approach it because I don't want you to just give you the strategy and be like good luck you, right. know, you know figure yeah. it out um, because everybody is different, you know, like just some examples are, you know, there's product launches, you know, ClickFunnels is a, is a product, but there's, you know, JVZoo, ClickBank product launches every month. Uh, so that's one angle. That's one way to use this. Um, then you've got e products. You said you're an e -com. Well, there's tons of different e products. So you can use this to rank or, or to rank more terms for your like your ecom store so right. um i know with shopify and stuff all these ecom trainings they pitch like you know combine facebook with shopify but you know don't you think if you had more organic traffic you would also make more sales oh, yes makes sense. so so you can do that with shopify you can do that if you're doing uh amazon fba um there are uh, you know there you know we speak english i'm unfortunately just unilingual right now but there's other languages on the yeah. planet so and even if you don't speak those languages, there are free translation tools out right. there. So if you have a, an article in English, you can convert to French and uh, promote like a French diet weight loss product or something. So there's all these different angles to scale. And I just try to present those to people inside the course because I don't know which one's going to like resonate with you. I just want to expose you to all these different options because just picking one of them can, is enough to make you – ridiculously you know successful right. like just focus focusing on um you know even just click funnels like not to like you know uh just keep promoting click funnels or whatever but like it's a good it's a good product to promote at least it's a very lucrative affiliate program yeah. but there's um there's so many random uh affiliate programs out there that um like there's super niche that i mean if you think but you know, ClickFunnels is pretty popular in our space, but there are uh, there's just so many different other products out there, <laughs> and the the more niche it, it is, it's like way less competition. Like once you get outside the internet marketing niche, like when you're talking about like I don't know, just like pay attention to like commercials and what's on the news, like because uh, you know things like standing desk or those hoverboards and things those are just examples of fidget spinners like someone's gonna make millions of dollars with the fidget spinners or they already have you know that's a trend but like uh, some other um angles are seasonal products so uh it's february so valentine's was this month so but next month guess what it's, it's saint patrick's day there's gonna be all these saint patrick's day celebrations yep. then there's easter and then there's Fourth of July, and then there's Thanksgiving. Like so, if you uh, seasonal things are kind of like product launches. So there's going to be a big spike, but if you focus on all of the major ones, 
then there's going to be a consistent spike of sales throughout the year. So like if you want to go the seasonal route of just holidays and stuff, you can uh, focus on like Valentine's Day, uh, Valentine's Day um, you know, whatever. Uh, Best chocolates, chocolates or, or stuff. <laughs> yeah, Sherry's Berries I'm sure has an affiliate program or yeah. something. Like, and so you could be like one of the only affiliates that's like crushing on Sherry's Berries um, in February. But then in March, maybe you're promoting like some – St. Patrick's Day stuff on Amazon or something. Yeah. I don't know. Like, there's so many different angles, and then you've got uh, sports stuff. So there's tons of sports, and then within the uh, category of sports, you got multiple teams. Yeah. So like, uh, I mean, baseball, football, soccer, football, uh, yeah, uh, hockey, um, and then you've got all the teams. So like, there's so many, and then to ex- expand even further, all the teams have long tail keywords. Tons of them. So. Yeah. It's, it's it's limitless. It's yeah, I call it infinitely scalable because yeah. it's just it, it'll never run out. And then uh, I'm throwing out all all these ideas, but like, and so another one is um, every year there's new bands, there's new TV shows, there's new movies. Right. So on top of all these layers of like sustainable evergreen keywords, like the diet and weight loss stuff, the seasonal stuff that's going to come around every single year. Then you've got all the spikes of stuff like the uh, – basically every movie is a product launch. You yeah. know, they have a trailer and then the product, you know, the, the release date. Right. So you can lever – get a piggyback off all those traffic spikes and um, I don't know, sell like a uh, – there's a, a movie service uh, called MoviePass that's like free um, – well, not free. It's a. It's like kind of like Netflix, but you can see as many movies as you want um, each month. Uh, new movies at theaters and stuff. So like they have an affiliate program. It's called a Movie Pass. So uh, that's so crazy. That's a good up. idea. That's a great idea. Because movies, yeah, there's always new movies, and they actually have like a calendar of new when they release, so you can kind of prepare. Exactly, and it, you just, you can predict the stuff. Yeah. Like, and here's um, another little angle, kind of diving deep in there. So like. Um, if, I don't know, if you just like use a little common sense. So some of these, if this new movie has a new actor and they're pretty attractive, you can pretty much bet that there's going to be a lot of searches for that actor. Like I'll give you a little example. So a couple of years ago when Wolf of Wall Street came out, um, Margot Robbie was in that. And I was like, man, I've never seen that girl before because she's from Australia. Yeah. But I was like, nah, I just have a gut feeling that she's going to be in a lot more movies. <laughs> and and she has been. She's right. like exploded. So, um, but they they give you they, they give you that months in advance. They're like, this is the person that's going to star in this movie. And like, if you've never seen her and like she's hot, you're like, you know, I bet a bunch of dudes are going to be searching for Margot Robbie's name. Right. And when they do, like you can get in front of that traffic and promote like a fitness product or something be like hey do you want to have a hot body like margot robbie check out this diet and weight loss product and insane like, <laughs> insane and you know probably gonna make a lot of sales and it's gonna be there's not that many people that are bidding on margot robbie's name right but she gets a shit ton of traffic yeah for her name so that's a lot of traffic and low competition so if you target a term like that it's just like gold mine yeah absolutely absolutely wow you got you guys you got so many ideas <laughs> from this guy i thought we were just going to talk about the uh the click funnel dream car we talked about a whole lot of stuff so greg thank you so much for coming on do you got any last words yeah check out my course <laughs> yeah, no but check out course, course. uh if you want a blueprint if you don't have a focus on this you're you know f- try to figure out this yourself because it um you know in theory you could go out there and learn this stuff on your own but um it's probably going to take you years and tens of thousands of dollars. And to be completely like honest and transparent, you're probably never, ever going to come across the same information that I'm sharing inside this course, just because, you know, we all have different, completely different lives. We run into different uh, people and different experiences. So you're probably never, ever going to find all of the same information that I'm giving to you inside this course. So definitely check out the course if you're interested and, um, learning this stuff if you're just getting started or if you already are established and you're looking to kind of lay a, 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 a long-term foundation for your business. I have a lot of some people there um, 
enrolled in the course that they already have a successful business, but they're like, oh, I'm using the strategies that uh, I'm learning inside of here to kind of uh, future-proof my business so that it's passive and sustainable. Because right. a lot of people, um, you know, in ClickFunnels, there are a lot of successful people that do pay traffic. But even though, and so they're, you know, they tend to make a lot more money than me, but they are jealous of me because I, you know, I'll, I'll Skype with them and they're like, man, you know, I am making more money than you, but your stuff is passive. My stuff is, I have to kind of like manage campaigns and exactly. or work with clients or whatever. Exactly. And although they're making more money, their time is kind of tied up. Right. More, you're, so. you're more free than they are. Yeah. So, and that's amazing. But, so check out the course uh, if you, and then also, just you know, the other you know entrepreneurs and internet marketers have said this, but just get started. You know, you're never going to be the best uh, in the beginning. Just get started, just and be disciplined and consistent. Like stick with it. Uh, I know we all like you know Netflix and going out, hang out with friends and partying and whatever. But like, be disciplined and consistent. You can still have fun, but. You know, it's going to take some time and effort and and commitment to be successful. Like if you really chat and hang out with some of these other really successful marketers, you may see them on YouTube videos. You may see them on their sales videos and like, uh, you know, driving a Lambo or something. But what you don't see is like the other 98% of the time where they're working, Right. you know. You see, you see like a little snapshot of their life and you think it's all great and everything came easy. But the rest of the time, I can pretty much guarantee you they're putting in a lot of hours. Yeah. So there's no easy button. You know, it gets easier right. after you put in the work, but you got to gotta put in that effort yeah. at some point. Like A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Thank you so much, Greg. Guys, definitely. Do you have a YouTube channel, by the way, that they could check out or no? Uh, Not a private, I'll a public one? I'll give him one call to action. Okay, good. That's fine with me. So check out his course. There's going to be a link down below, guys. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you have any suggestions for future videos, leave a comment. If you haven't subscribed yet, definitely subscribe because there's going to be more interviews like this. I want to thank Greg again for coming on my channel because it's been eye eye opener. Uh, I learned a lot of things. I hope you did too. So uh, I'll see you guys later in the next video. Take care, guys. Bye.